quantum enthusiasts. Welcome to the Classic Bootcamp, the perfect pit stop on your journey to understanding and mastering Classic. I'm Tali, a product and community manager at Classic, and I hope you're ready for an exciting journey into the world of quantum computing. The universe of Classic may appear as enigmatic as the quantum phenomena it explores. However, fear not. All you need in order to join us is a basic understanding of the fundamental quantum concepts, like what qubits are and what quantum circuits do. If you're new to these terms, don't worry. There are tons of online resources to help you out. You can start by checking out this video. The Classic Bootcamp isn't just about learning. It includes exercise that will help you become quantum experts and will prepare you for the upcoming Classic Quest Hackathon that starts on the 8th of October. If you haven't yet signed up for that, I highly recommend you do it now. It's going to be great fun. So, what is the Classic Bootcamp going to look like? We've organized it into four lessons, each unlocking a unique aspect of Classic's power. Every day, we will expose a new session accompanied by a challenge for you to solve. The first lesson includes introductions of the fascinating world of quantum applications. You'll discover what quantum applications and quantum algorithms are, how to access them using Classic, and how to run them with just a simple click. In the second lesson, we'll dive deeper into quantum models. This is where you will encounter the power of Classic's engine. We will start with a quantum model that describes the high-level functionality of an algorithm or application and see how you can generate optimized quantum circuits from it, while all is done automatically with Classic. Lesson three brings theory into practice while guiding you through running quantum algorithms on real quantum hardware and powerful simulators. You will understand how Classic enables optimized executions on quantum processes as it takes the hardware itself into consideration while designing the quantum circuits. Execution has never been so simple. Make sure to check it out. Finally, lesson four uncovers a new dimension. While in the first three lessons, we will use a web-based Classic IDE. In this lesson, we'll use the Python SDK to squeeze every drop of power out of Classic and to make the most out of its potential for innovative problem solving. Prepare to quantum code like a pro. To earn this desired certificate and win some cool prizes, you've got to complete and submit all four challenges. But don't worry, we're here to guide you through every quantum twist and turn. Before we deeply dive into Classic's mysterious ocean, we will have Nia, our CEO, introduce Classic, and then Gal, one of the hosts of this bootcamp, demonstrate the Classic platform and its capabilities. So, what are you waiting for? Join our Slack community where you will find more information, and let's embark on this exciting quantum journey together. Hi, my name is Nir Minerbi. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO in Classic. We are at the dawn of a new era in computing. In the next two years, quantum computing will shift from exploration to production, allowing game-changing applications in all industries. And what's going to be your role in this emerging field? They probably told you quantum was too complex, non-suitable for non-quantum experts. And that's true, it was, not anymore. With Classic, quantum computing software is much easier and suitable for all. Classic brings the first quantum operating system, compiler, and IDE. This is an end-to-end -end solution, allowing you to develop a higher level model of a quantum application. Then automatically a quantum circuit is synthesized and could be executed on any quantum computer or quantum simulator. The platform is already used by many organizations, both enterprises as Rolls-Royce, Toshiba, HSBC, KPMG, governments, and over 400 universities globally. We welcome you to the Classic Bootcamp and hope you will enjoy this time with us and will create novel quantum software. Hi, my name is Gal and I'm a physicist working at Classic. My PhD is in quantum hardware, cold atoms, laser physics, and quantum optics. In the past few years, I've been working on higher parts of the quantum stack, control, and software. Today, I want to show you something quite exciting. I will show you how to compute one plus one. I've not gone crazy. I know that's a very odd thing for you and me to spend time on, but I want to show it to you anyway. I think this will be a nice way for all of us to learn about computation and what happens when you want to compute things on quantum computers. Let's talk about computation then. Computers used to be people whose job it was to count or calculate things following sets of rules. These could be finding the total money in a cash register at the end of the day, 
tables with values of logarithms and trigonometric functions to several digits of precision, or the path taken by an Apollo program spacecraft heading to the moon. Although people have been doing such tasks with dedication for many years, and this led to much of the progress we enjoy today, manual computation isn't very efficient or quick, and it's error prone. The dream of automated computation is an old one. It can be traced to many different cultures, ranging from the Sumerians in the 20th century BCE, the Chinese in the 10th century BCE, the Indians in the 5th century BCE, and the Islamic world in the Middle Ages. In Europe, Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace worked on detailed designs for calculating machines in the 18th century. So automating computation and making them quick and efficient is a dream many millennia in the making. This dream has become a culture-transforming reality since the middle of the 20th century, with the invention and unparalleled development of electronic general-purpose computers and the algorithms they run. As we know, quantum computation and quantum information seek to improve and extend the capabilities of electronic computers for some, but not all, kinds of problems. Quantum computers are extensions to other computers. They aren't magic. You still need to put in the information somehow and do things to it in just the right way so you come up with the answer that makes sense. Today, we'll use the classic platform to learn how to do something completely classical with a quantum computer. It may seem a bit silly to do something quite this simple, but we're going to calculate 1 plus 1 on a quantum computer. In the process, we will see how to use the classic IDE to design a circuit, how to visualize that circuit, and finally, how to interpret the results of the computation. Classics IDE is a great way to interact with a classic engine from the web. I begin by opening the IDE and signing in. Let's now find the 1 plus 1 example on the QMOD editor on the left-hand side of the screen. From the basic examples, we choose the learning arithmetics example. Within the model itself, in the center, we change the values of A and B to B1. We can synthesize the circuit and see what we get. There are two state preparation blocks which prepare our inputs to be 1 and 1. These feed into the adder block. You can see it has two input arguments and a sum bus. A bus is the name given to a collection of qubits when considered together. If we expand the adder block, you can see the selected implementation. There is more than one, and the classic engine selects the best one given the constraints given to it. Look at the gate selected by the model behind the scenes. It's already far from simple to know what the correct thing to do is if you had to do it manually. Finally, we can execute this circuit. Each output qubit is sampled and we get a histogram showing us how many times each possible set of bit measurements, called a bit string, was measured at the output. Look at the output from the adder. It has three qubits. And when we look at the output buffer called out, we see three binary digits. Indeed, we can see the output string 010 was sampled 2048 times, which is the number of times the circuit was run in this case. 010 in binary is 2. So we're happy to see we got what we were hopefully looking to see. I hope you enjoyed this general introduction to simple usage of the classic platform. We learned about the basics of functional modeling circuit synthesis and execution, and interpretation of the measurement results. In the following videos, we will learn a lot more. So good luck, have fun, and stay classic. <laughs>